one. <laughs> Today we have an exclusive interview here at the Metal Talk podcast with the guitars of one of the most beloved bands in the world of power metal, for sure one of mine. Of course, that is Ed Guy and his most recent project, The Grandmaster. His name is Jens Ludwig. Jens, welcome to your home, the Metal Talk podcast. How are you today? Uh, well, first of all, thanks a lot for having me. Um, actually, I'm doing pretty, pretty good today. Uh, generally, I'm doing pretty good, but uh, especially nowadays, it's a, a, it's a good it's a good timing because, uh, well, two days ago, it was my birthday and uh, I'm, I'm currently touring a lot, uh, but I have a break right now. So I, I had some quality time with my family at home. Uh, so I'm, I'm in a pretty good mood actually right now. So uh, you couldn't have any better timing. <laughs> <laughs> hey so first of all happy birthday uh i hope you had a very happy one yes yes it was pretty yeah. very very relaxed and chill but that's uh that was exactly the way i wanted it to be like only my family around and sit on the couch do almost nothing because as i said last <laughs> week I've, I've been touring currently uh so that break uh, was welcomed very much <laughs> Talk to us about, uh, uh, about the touring aspect that you just spoke about. Who are you touring with? Uh, what countries or areas are you visiting currently, Jens? Um, actually, I'm just uh, right at the moment, I'm touring only in Germany. Um, I'm playing with a German folk rock band, some stuff like that in German language. Uh, I'm a member of, of their live band since uh, four years right now. And um, actually, those guys, they have a pretty good concept to, to make uh, small shows work, even... Uh, if we are in lockdown, or even if the pandem pandemic is, is going crazy. Um, so it looks like that I'm going to play uh, from June to October. Uh, I'll be around maybe 100 shows. So I'm uh, wow. actually pretty busy with that. And uh, that's that's also another, uh, another point why I'm in such a good mood, because I'm one of the few <laughs> musicians who are able to go out and play live and make make the living out of playing live but it's which is pretty rare nowadays because if you, if you look around like everybody is really fucked up due to due to nobody can play live and all that shit so um i'm actually in a very very thankful position right now that's very good now you mentioned it's a, a german uh, a rock folk metal is that right uh, it's a, I wouldn't call it metal. It's it's a, it's a mixture of folk music with rock elements. So uh, oh, and awesome. we're singing in German language. So it's uh, it's not exactly the music I I would listen to uh, private, but uh, it's it's fun to play and it's a, it's a good team and we're we're nice musicians. So uh, I feel very comfortable being a part of that as well. <laughs> what is the name of this band yet, so that people over here in North America can listen to it? Oh, uh, North America. Well, actually, we've been to North America as well. We are playing uh, a lot of Oktoberfest. Like we played, for example, oh, yeah. uh, Cleveland. We played Tulsa. We played uh, two years ago. We played Toronto. So it's, wow. a, it's, a, it's a kind of Bavarian rock band. You know, that's why we are playing uh, Oktoberfests all over right, the world. Right. So it's a, a kind of this, uh, uh, this genre. Well, what is the name of the band again? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, the name is called the uh, Dorf Rocker, which means uh, a Dorf oh, is, a, is, a, is a synonym for village. And Rocker is, yeah, a Rocker, it means... Uh, a rocker. Rockers from the countryside, so something like that. And it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also topic of, of their songs and it's also topic of, of their attitude. Uh, for example, right now in the, the pandemic, um, there are no regular shows allowed, but what's allowed here in Germany is to do uh, like uh, car cinema shows, you know, where the people have to sit right. in their cars and watching the band perform. Uh, that's uh, the kind of thing that we are doing currently, just not with cars, uh, because it's the rockers from the countryside and all that. We're right. playing only in front of a uh, house, the English word, uh, uh, tractors, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, tractors, like farm tractors or something. Farm tractors, exactly. Farm machines, yeah. farm tractors. So uh, people, they are, we are playing show where we have our own stage on a trailer and we built that up. And then just imagine we're playing in front of, uh, usually it's something in between 150 and 200 farm tractors. Wow. And uh, people sitting there and uh, uh, making Everybody's drinking, everybody's dancing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as it's possible to dance. <laughs> but it, it sounds like but a great party. Uh, it is, it is. Actually, we started this out as a, it was a, a it, it should be a kind of, oh, okay, we try if it works, you know, something like that. But then uh, the, the, the people were going crazy and it started as uh, two shows in front of uh, farm tractors and now we have done already 75. So um, wow. 
I, I didn't know that there are so many farm tractors in Germany existing. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing, but it's, um, well, I'm, I'm sure let's put it this way. If, if we talk about this thing in five years, I, I, I'm sure I have a lot of great stories to tell about this. So that, that's the way how I like to see it. Like uh, that's something uh, nobody or very few people have the, uh, the possibility to, to experience something like that. And that's yeah. how I like to put it. That's something very, very special. I'm, I'm pretty happy to be a part of it. And uh, well, as I said, in, in a few years, I have a couple of more interesting stories to tell, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and, and Jens, you said it yourself, so fortunate that you continue to play live shows during this time. And what better way to do it in such a fun scenario, you know, that keeps you, I guess, on your toes and happy throughout this whole uh, uh, pandemic bullshit that we are going through right that is fantastic you are so lucky to do that and i honestly can't wait to go to one of these tractor parties and experience it myself well you should come to germany but you should come quick because it's getting pretty cold here so and it's all open uh -huh. air so we're probably going to keep on doing this maybe until uh yeah we have a few dates left in september uh but right. in october well i don't know what's going to happen then it's just <laughs> like it's really really difficult because uh Due to the due to Corona, it's uh, the restrictions are changing like almost every second week, and uh, well, we have like uh, let's say we have like 15 dates confirmed, and then the next week it's oh well two of them uh, well we don't have the permission anymore, so we have to reschedule them, and it's it's really we have to be flexible as hell these days. Right. But um, but as I said, bottom line, I'm I'm so happy that I'm able to to do something like that right now that uh, everything else, it's just peanuts. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, the normality of, of the entertainment industry now, you know, things changing so rapidly and all that, but Jens, let's uh, let's get right into the, the topic of the most recent news that were dropped uh, into all power metal fans, you know, after, you know, many, many years and, and a long time really not hearing from, you know, the ad guy camp or Jens or what the boys were doing, we get the big news that your project with Nando Fernandez, Brazilian singer, uh, 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 he, he and, your, and, and you get together to form the Grand Master. Talk to us. How did you form this band? And uh, why did you finally, finally decide to drop uh, you know, a project of yours, Jens? Well, it was as surprising for me as it is for you right now. <laughs> uh, no, 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 ser seriously. I mean, uh, uh, of course, it's 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 a frontiers project, and um, I, I have to say, um, it, it it was not actually my plan to uh, to do a project like like this and to to form a band with Nando. Um, it was actually I received last uh, last autumn autumn two thousand twenty. I received an email from uh, from frontiers. Uh, and they were asking me if I would like to, to participate in the project they are working on. And um, they told me already, well, we have the Brazilian singer and we have, uh, we have a good songwriter. We have already the songs for the album. And uh, they asked me if I wanted to participate in the, this band, uh, playing all the guitars, recording guitars, and also being a, a member of this band then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, yeah, sure, why, why not? The timing was perfect. Uh, we played some shows last year as well until uh, September, I think, uh, or no, a few shows in October. And then right after that, the email came. So it was like, uh, okay, I'm done with this one with touring now. I have free time. I would love to play some guitar on a metal album. And I was listening to the songs. They were done already uh, with uh, right. Alessandro Del Vecchio singing on them on the demo version. So I couldn't hear oh, Nando, wow. but uh, I could hear the songs. And uh, I just needed that. That's a true story. It's really, I, I needed two songs. And I was like, yeah, I, hell yeah, I want to do it. It was a True North and Luna Waters. Those were the first right. songs I've, I've been listening to. And I was triggered immediate, immediately. And uh, well, that's, uh, that's almost the end of the story. They gave me the material. Uh, I recorded everything at home, recorded my guitar parts. And um, uh, I'm, a ha I'm a happy man <laughs> once again. Uh, right. the, the funny thing about that was actually that I, um, I really didn't hear anything of Nando's vocals until the record was finished. So that was mm. a very, very exciting and new, uh, new way of creating, creating music, like just playing your parts and uh, hope that it finally will fit together with what uh, the other guys are doing. Um, but it, it worked. As I, I said it previously on, on another interview, it, it was just everything just felt right. It was the, the right timing, 
uh, I had a very good connection to everybody involved, be it Frontiers Records or uh, Alessandro, the producer, and, and Nando, we chatted a lot. Uh, unfortunately, we, we didn't meet personally until now due to uh, Corona. But, um, well, all the, all the interactions, all the chats I had, I, I felt so comfortable. Like, uh, I, I, almost, I almost felt like being home. The, the people were mm -hmm. nice. Everything was going really, really, really smooth. And um, yes, they were they were trusting me with with my with my work. That was uh, also very important. Like uh, uh, I was asking Priya to the recordings if there are any uh, if they want to have anything special. How should I play uh, this song or uh, should I put it in a certain direction? Whatever, ask musical questions like this. And their their answer was simply, well, Jens, you know, we wanted you to play guitar, so do whatever you feel is right. Just do what you do, and uh, we're happy with it. And that was like. Uh, triggered me once more and uh, as I said bo bottom line I think um, I had a lot of fun recording it I felt comfortable with every song and I had a connection and I also think I'm, I'm pretty proud of the record as well of the result like yeah. uh, when I heard Nando's vocals on it and the songs I was like goosebumps all over it was yeah. really pff, cool and I'm actually the perception until now is, is really good as far as I'm as I realize it uh, you know, as, as you said, a lot of people say, whoa, it's, it's cool that you're still making this kind of music after we haven't heard from you for four years or something. Uh, that, uh, yeah, feels very great. You know, this made big news uh, down in South America, you know, where you have a huge fan base, like, you know, Mexico, Brazil has a huge fan base for, for yourself, you know, so this resonated very well with the public because we obviously wanted to hear from you. Now, uh, I've personally heard songs like Someday, Somehow, The Tempest, you know, which are available, yeah. you know, in different platforms worldwide. Uh, where, when, when, really, when can we actually listen to the full length album? Where is it going to drop? Uh, the full length album is going to drop on October 15th. October um, 15th. That, that's for Europe. I don't know if there's any, any different dates in, in the States or South America. I, I don't know. Right. But uh, let's say middle of October uh, will work for everybody. Now, hopefully after, and it's so hard to predict, of course, but hopefully after all this BS, you know, comes about and goes about, uh, maybe there'll be some uh, South American touring, maybe some uh, dates in the States or something like that. Um, I really hope so, and I'm, I'm totally open for everything. Um, but of course, since it's a, yeah, it's still a project from a record company. You you have to we have to of keep course. that in mind. Yeah. For for now, but but honestly, I really see a lot of a lot of potential that this could become a real band since there is a, a good connection within the, the the musicians within the people, and I know because. Uh, <laughs> I'm involved. <laughs> that, that, that was a totally stupid sentence. So if you can cut it out, but <laughs> cool. No, what, what I wanted to say is that I, um, I also I already talked with with Alessandro, the the producer and the, the main songwriter of the first first album. Uh, we already exchanged ideas for 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 the next album. So it's really looking wow. good right now. That from this, okay, uh, the initial initial comes from the record company. That's for sure. But now we're we're getting together, like we're planning already, okay, what can we do differently for, for the next album? We would like to do some stuff together. And if we manage to go that way, then it's gonna be pretty cool, I think. Of course, I can't promise anything yet, but that's where we are right now and where I'm personally working on to make this uh, go on for a little longer. <laughs> We're definitely going to be tuned, uh, tuned in into any any news coming from the Grandmaster. And of course, the song's available, Jens. We're going to leave uh, links here in the comment section so that everybody can listen to it in case you haven't, you're missing out. You have to listen to this stuff. It's really, really cool. I personally enjoyed it a lot. Um, so now, uh, Jens, moving on a little bit and talking about you, about Jens Ludwig, of course. Let's chat a little bit about your career in general. Of course, uh, one of the bands that took you uh, uh, to fame in the metal world is obviously Ed Guy. Uh, and I have to be honest with you, when we confirmed this interview, I got very excited because Ed Guy for me was one of those bands that obviously everybody gets into power metal with Halloween. But then after Halloween comes something else that really anchors you into the genre. And for me, it was Ed Guy. Uh, okay. I was just very, yeah, very deeply, deeply into, into this band. Uh, and so, you know, we must, uh, uh, you know, it's 10, 10 studio albums, uh, your career spanning since 97, almost 25 years in power metal. So we must ask, and you must get this a lot. I want to start off with this because it comes off stemmed 
of another interview that we had here at the Metal Talk podcast with uh, Timo Tolki. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we know that obviously he was, uh, he produced your uh, one of your albums. Uh, he participated there. Uh, he said that in the Scarlet Rose, he played uh, the tambourine. Uh, he, yes. I, I don't know if you remember that. Remember that? Yes, I, but, I do. Yeah, but in the in the in the, the most uh, uh, mythical question ever for the Edgar world, I think it is when where does the name come from? So he says it comes uh, as a little tribute to uh, Iron Maiden and Eddie, and it's the Eddie guys. Um, uh, I I want to close this myth forever, and I want you to tell everybody where exactly Ed guy means. And you you probably want me to tell the truth right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need you to tell the truth because <laughs> well, every, everybody boring. has been wondering about this. Everybody has been wondering about this for many years. I've heard something about a school teacher, something. What's the truth? Well, actually, the, the truth is what you just mentioned about the school teacher. Um, okay. uh, basically, and, and that's the truth. Basically, when we when we started the band, we were 13, 14 years old. And I, I remember it as, as if it was yesterday. Uh, Toby and me, me sitting in art class in, uh, in school and uh, writing down a lot of, lot of possible names for, for, for our band. Because we knew we want to form a metal band, but we didn't have any names. So we were writing down different names, like song names from other bands. Or I remember one of my favorite uh, favorite options back then has been, for example, Gallows Pole. I, I liked the sound pretty much, just, just yeah. one example. And one of these, let's say 500 different possible band names, one of them was War Guy, which uh, should be considered to be some war hero, something like that. Right, as far right. as we as we have been into English language back then, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, it, it was just yeah we were we were messing around yeah war guy ah uh, not good and back then as you said we had a teacher he's called uh, Edgar, and he was just uh, Eddie Eddie for us and and we just messed yeah why not why not exchange war to to Ed and we are the Ed guys call ourselves Ed guy and it was out of a joke we we thought it was pretty funny back then, and uh, we said yeah it's a, it's a u u unique name uh, well it's a uh, no band ever will call themselves that way because uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> and uh, that's basically how we how we came to the name, and um, we got stuck to it. And actually, there have been in the first years of our, of our career, there have been a lot of thoughts like, "Oh, that's it's not really a, a, a name that fits to a power metal band." Like we realized that, right? Uh, right. But then we we came to the conclusion that we. Um, had already released our first demos and then our self-produced CD. And then it was, suddenly it was too late just to change the name again. <laughs> and right. it just, uh, it just, uh, we just kept it. And um, in, in the beginning, since uh, same as you, everybody kept asking, yeah, what's the name Ed Guy about? Where does this name come from? And we had, we had a phase in our career where we, uh, where we made up stories about it. Like we told in every interview, we would tell, we've been tried, we tried to tell a different story of where the mm -hmm. name is coming from. And that's, uh, that's where all the confusion probably comes from. <laughs> that, that is funny. And I'm so happy that you finally, finally solved the mystery for us, Jens. Thank you for that. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, as fanatics, <laughs> as fanatics, people are crazy and they wonder about, you know, these crazy uh, <laughs> things like this. So we really wanted to ask you. So, uh, Jens, you mentioned Toby, you know, growing up, we know that you grew up uh, with the rest of the boys uh, and then Felix uh, joined the fold. Uh, uh, further down, um, we have to ask you, uh, what is your relationship with him nowadays? Uh, on, I, we know that everybody's working on their own projects, everybody's living their own lives, but what, what, what was the last time that you guys connected? Obviously, my question root, rooted from the last Ed Guy album being released almost seven years ago. So yeah. what is that relationship like? Um... Uh, it's it's not not the same anymore as uh, when we were twenty. That's that, that's for sure because uh, everybody grew up. I mean, it's it's a long a long time. Um, right. I, I'm, I'm personally I'm pretty happy. You said uh, earlier on the, on the on the previous question. You said uh, one sentence like one of the bands that uh, made us know your name was Ed Guy. Um, I, I would disagree. I would say it was the band. Well, I, I didn't play in any other band for twenty five years. So, uh, yeah. or any known band, let's put it this way. Uh, and this was, uh, I mean, for all of us, it's a, a musician's dream come true. Like, you know, having, having 
having friends in school, form a band, become famous. So uh, there's nothing more to add. Um, but then, then um, yeah, as I, I had the feeling that, um, well, everybody was moving somehow in a little different different directions there has been a, a there has been a, there are still connections of course um, but but everybody's moving moving forward and the last le the last contact actually i had with the guys was uh, uh, actually two days ago since they, everybody called me for <laughs> uh, saying happy birthday, birthday and stuff and uh, besides that there's there's always some let's say background activity going on even in that guy because uh, we have our online shop going we have a uh, AFM records, for example, they are just uh, they have just scheduled a re-release of Savage Poetry. So that there Ooh. there is connection, and we we are talking, and we are we are dropping mails, and we uh, well we don't we don't meet for having a beer since uh, everybody is like busy right now. Um, but yeah, it's it's still uh, um, uh, not not the closest closest not we are not the closest friends, but we are much more than buddies. Let's put it this way. <laughs> I think that's uh, of course. That, that's that's pretty cool but uh well besides that um we, we just have to wait and see right now I, I i agree that it's been now uh well yes it's that's space police was uh 2014 and uh then we had uh the, the monuments which was 2017 and since then we have we haven't done anything haven't uh, haven't played live have done nothing um well i, I i'd be open for um for for rearranging stuff and for uh let's see if it's working but uh, i'm not the only member in the band so <laughs> of course yeah how do you how do you personally feel about because we know fans they don't like it that much but we want to know your personal feelings about these long breaks between that guy uh we know the reasoning how do you feel about him um it it, it depends it depends it's it's, it's really so, sometimes i'm uh, i'm a bit frustrated uh that's for sure but then i'll there are other moments where I think, well, it's 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 probably a good decision what we are doing right now, um, since yeah, it's been a long, 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 long time since we we're to, together, and since we have been like this together, and nobody really knew uh, any any anything outside of this of this band. So it, I, I think it was just it was just necessary, and um, let let's hope uh, the the perfect thing uh, the the perfect thing would be that uh, like in one or two years or whenever. Uh, we all meet together. We've been all grown up a little bit, and then we put out another killer record. That would be at least my uh, my wish for the future of the band. <laughs> right. I, I'm very excited about the re-release of Savage Poetry, by the way, because I think it's one of it's an incredible, incredible album. I, it was one of my favorites, and and definitely in, in that guy's lineup of albums. Um, you know, such a great band, such a fantastic, uh, uh, you know, uh, array of songs you guys have. I'll never forget the first time that I listened to uh, Ed Guy. I was walking into a convenience store in Monterrey, Mexico, where I'm from. Uh, somebody was listening to Fallen Angels from Mandrake in a little boombox. The attendant was yeah. listening to it. I was probably I was probably around 12, 13, and I asked it, what are you listening to? ¿Qué estás escuchando? It's like, oh, it's Ed Guy. And that's when I was just recently introduced into Halloween. So it was like, whoa, blew my mind. Since then, <laughs> I haven't stopped listening to Ed, guys. So I want to ask you, Jens, uh, there's so many iconic songs, again, that the band has. Uh, uh, many fans love you around the world. Uh, a lot of these songs have uh, solos that definitely uh, stick out, whether it's in the live uh, scenario or just in the album, you know, The Pharaoh. Oh, what a song, oh. especially in Burning Down the Opera. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, maybe The Piper Never Dies is another one that, you know, real long opus that brings you so many different changes and, and things like that. Uh, what are some of your favorite compositions among Ed Guy that you can highlight for us? Uh, aside from what we like, what is it that you like from Ed Guy? What really stood out from you in this, in this band? Uh... Yeah, I, I would say one of the songs that I was uh, actually even, uh, I have one song where I, I can tell a story about it. It's from, from Hellfire Club album. Actually not from the album, it's from, from the King of Fools EP. Uh, the song is called Holy Water. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's actually one song. Uh, we, had, we had a lot of discussions back then since, since I really wanted this song to be on the album. I said, well, that's, it's so good. It has to be on the album. But on the other hand, back, back then, we had so many good songs, like every song on the EP could have come on the album. But that's maybe one song that uh, many people maybe don't have uh, uh, 
are, are not uh, don't have in mind when they're thinking of uh, of the best ed guy song so uh that's my advice for everybody who hasn't checked out this song it's it's really a very very intense song and um, actually one of my favorites that isn't on a regular record unfortunately <laughs> and i've got one more it was on on the superheroes ep uh judas at the opera featuring michael kiske that is also a yes. very very good one <laughs> One of my favorite songs. Uh, one of, definitely one of my favorite songs. What are the, what are what are the lyrics? Do you do you remember what the lyrics in that song are about? Do you recall this at all? Uh, yes, yes. I, I think it's uh, it's about the peacock, uh, a peacock and stuff. <laughs> yes. uh, no, I, I I remember, but I think I think as far as I remember, uh, the, the message is like. Um, Okay, this song is, uh, we have, uh, it's 15 years old. So, uh, but, but back mm -hmm. then, we have to go a little back in time. Uh, we have been uh, also, or we had some issues with, uh, with journalists or, or even with fans who uh, were of the opinion mm -hmm. that uh, being a metal band doesn't include to have any sense of humor. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if you're yeah. a metal band, you have to be serious. And we've been also always confrontated with that. Uh, since yeah we have been really enjoying what we were doing all the time and i think judas at the opera is exactly what this is what this is about be true to yourself no matter if people saying you it doesn't belong to what you're doing if you feel it's right then just keep on doing it and it's i remember uh, who, who let this peacock in to rock the house opera house yeah that's one line i had to, i have in mind from this and that's exactly yeah. what What's that peacock doing in that opera? What, what's that humor doing in, in heavy metal music? It doesn't belong here, but yes, if you like it, it belongs there. <laughs> you mentioned having fun, and uh, I don't think there's another band that just makes me smile with like Robin Hood or Love Tiger or all the many funny metal songs that you guys have. They're great for running. They're great for working. I just love Ed Guy. And you said it yourself. It's a, it's a band that it's also it's about having fun. And I think your fans have a lot of fun too when you're listening to the music. And that's just incredible, Jens. So thanks for sharing that story with us. I, I wanted to say uh, a lot of fans might also not know this, but you, you were involved in Aventasia part one and two in the albums. As a matter of fact, you recorded some of the guitars in this albums and in, in, in what I think are some of the best songs, Sign of the Cross, You Were in the Tower uh, for part one, and then Final Sacrifice and Memory for part two. Yeah. Did you have any input in these songs? Were these already written? Or how was this for you working with, obviously, I mean, the greatest of power metal back at, the, back at that time? And still. Um, well, but back, back then, for me, it didn't feel like that. It, it was just, you know, I was working with, with Toby and the other guys as well. Uh, and especially yeah. the, the first two metal operas, part, part one and two, uh, they have been recorded in the same studio as we did all the Ed Guy records until Hellfire Club. Um, so it was a, a, a very, uh, um, I knew the environment, I knew the studio, I knew the people working with. Uh, and I've been all, also there while, uh, while Marcos and Alex and Henry were ha have been there to record their parts. So back then it was really like, uh, yeah, we, we've been just hanging out together. Uh, it didn't matter if, uh, if we are recording an album with that guy in the studio or if Toby is recording the Avantasia album in the same studio. We just uh, went there and hang, hanging with the guys and stuff. And uh, the idea of, uh, of me playing, playing a solo on Avantasia was actually, actually just to show uh, the people that this back then uh, has nothing or doesn't mean that because Toby is doing Avantasia, it, it won't have any effect on the Ed guy. That's what we wanted mm. to show back then. And that, that's why Toby asked me, would you like to, to, to join and just play, play two so a couple of solos just to show the people that uh, we're, we're not arguing, that, that it's not the end of Ed guy, that we're still, we're still friends, we're still working together. That was the idea behind me being a part of the first two Avantasia albums as well. <laughs> Do you like the Aventasia material? Is it something that you, uh, obviously you may not listen to it in a, in a regular basis, but it, it, does it, do you feel like it has a certain, you're going to say yes, but does it have that Ed guy touch? Is it, is that, are you familiar with it or not necessarily? Uh, yeah, yes, of course. It's, uh, it's, it's the main songwriter. So uh, there yeah. are similarities. And uh, of course I, I love, uh, let's say, 98% of uh, everything Toby's doing. Um, right. 
so he, he's a he's a great composer of, of of course i mean it's 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 really there there's a there's a lot of discussions uh, not not within me but uh, within uh, i realize it on, on on fan forums and and stuff people are discussing about uh, if it would be the same like uh, uh, or just to think about how how would an Aventasia song sound if we would play with that guy or vice versa the other way around yeah. so of course there are similarities and and i'm familiar with the material and uh well, I have to say, I bought every Aventasia album. I bought it. I went to the store and bought it because that's uh, Toby is my friend, and that's my my way of show respect to what he has achieved. I mean, he's he's been giving me the CDs for free anyway later, and I was passing it to my to my parents and to, to friends and stuff. But I went. I have bought every single Aventasia release in the record store, so that's what I can tell. So um, wow. I must like it somehow. <laughs> That's that's a true friendship right there, man. That's that's incredible. Uh, it's really good to hear news like the like these, obviously, because we are fans and we want to we want to get closer to you, especially the fans that listen to this podcast want to hear it from for exactly from your voices, you know, from your experiences. Okay. So it's 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 fantastic to hear things like these. So uh, let me let me ask you, Jens. Um, during uh, obviously you spoke when we be began the interview, you spoke about you know you tour. Uh, you're staying real busy. Uh, you're doing a lot of things, you know, uh, uh, different things. Whether it's Grandmaster, with whether it's this band that you're working with in Germany or touring in Germany. Um, what do you do in your personal free time? What is it that you enjoy doing? Maybe it's a sport. Maybe it's something. You collect uh, cards or buttons or something like that. <laughs> what do you do for fun and as a hobby? Uh, for fun as as a hobby well yeah, uh, th th there's a difference between a hobby and something to to do for fun <laughs> no not <laughs> actually actually no that's exactly what a hobby is all about no but what, what i want to, i want to uh, uh, want to make a difference between uh, so um uh, one thing that is that is really really uh very very important for me and what i've realized and especially in the past years that it's was getting more and more important was re really just my, my family i have two kids and uh that's my source of energy uh, i can't put it into other words it's, it was like uh especially of course in, in the pandemic of course i had rough times as well but where no, nothing is going on where you're not able to to get out of the house where, where even with a with a good concept you can't do nothing you can't play shows and it's and um that that was the time i always said to my wife i'm, I'm sucking out the luck from my children <laughs> because i had the feeling <laughs> It's really whenever I had I had I was playing with them or just watching TV. It was it it was like, oh yeah, the world, everything's in place now. You, you know what I mean? That's something that really gives me gives me strength and and energy when I'm home and when I'm not doing anything that has to do with music. And um, besides that, I just can can say that uh, all my hobbies is uh, my hobbies and my job. It's all the same. So I'm I'm doing music for for my hobby and I'm doing music for for my living. It's um, it's all the same. Sometimes you, you you do music at home and you cannot really tell. Okay, is this is it is it now because you're enjoying doing this or is it now because uh, maybe this song could become a hit and you earn some money? So it's a uh, it's always both worlds. It's a uh, it's right. fun and also little business. You re really can't divide. But um, if I have some more free time, I really enjoy uh, some uh, computer games every now and then. If I have some free time, that's maybe okay. something not many, not many did know. But besides that, it's really most, almost everything is about music and family. Right. So you mentioned computer games. Uh, what do you like? Yeah, killing people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you like and as, uh... as many as possible ways as possible. <laughs> Well, 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 actually, one of my favorite games really was uh, uh, Saints Row. You know that that serious game? Oh yeah, series? Saints, Saints Row. Row. Yeah, Saints yeah. Row. Yeah, that that's awesome because it's uh, yeah, it's also about killing people. Yes, but it's mm -hmm. uh, it's so way over the top that it's so so yeah. much fun. I really enjoyed uh, all the games. So I'm looking forward. I just read that they are about to release another one, probably next year or something. So I'm uh, already waiting for this one. <laughs> Very cool. Are you on Xbox or PlayStation? You're on Xbox, right? Or PlayStation? No, uh, PlayStation. PlayStation. Yes. Very cool. I'm the same way, dude. I, I love <laughs> PlayStation too. Uh, hey, uh, listen, Jens, I want to thank you for such an incredible interview and such a good time, you know, chatting with you. 
Uh, obviously, we are very eager to listen to the rest of the Grandmaster album, which again, we'll be dropping links right here in the description below for the songs that are available right now, right here. Yeah. And make sure you listen to it. Follow Jens on social media. Jens, where can we find you? We know you have Instagram. We know you have Facebook. Where else can we find you? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can find me at home. Uh, here, right here. No, uh, seriously. You can find, um, yeah. Yeah, yes, I, I do have Facebook. That, that might be the, the, the best way to, to get in touch with me. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not good when it comes to social media. I just started Instagram. I just tried to, oh, maybe I could do a post or something, but, I, but I'm not, right. not into it yet. I, I still, uh, yeah, I'm getting older, so <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> but I, well, drop me a line on Facebook. That, that works uh, best for the moment. And I promise I will keep on working on my Instagram stuff skills and uh, yeah, pro 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 probably we'll, we'll get something going in the next weeks, hopefully. <laughs> thank you, Jens. Uh, thank you to all the fans. Make sure to listen to the Grandmaster. And of course, Jens, let me ask you something. Just leave us the little tease. Can, uh, can we expect an Ed Guy album in the next three years? Um, <laughs> I I can say no. I can say yes. I can say no. I, I would say no if you would have asked if we could expect an Ed Guy album this or next year. Um, I would definitely deny that. Uh, but mm -hmm. in three years, um, well, who knows? <laughs> Nevertheless, it, it always feels good. Uh, even if we're not making any music right now, it feels good when people telling us that I like us and they would like to hear some more music. Maybe it's... Uh, it can be a motivator. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. I had a, a pleasant time talking with you. It was great. Um, actually, did you know that we played in Monterey twice with that guy? Of course. You played uh, one time. You played in La Hacienda de... I can't remember what its name. But you played one time touring for Mandrake. And then the second right. time... Yeah, Monterey yeah, you, uh, you, you played Monterey Metal Fest. I was in the very first row. And it was you that gave my girlfriend your guitar pick you knelt down because she was really good looking, but you knelt down and you gave it to her and I automatically stole that from her. It's still in my collection. Oh, so, okay. so thank you for that. Thank you so for that. Man. Congratulations. Your answer has been correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Jens. It was a pleasure talking to you. Okay. Thank you very much and have a nice uh, day for you. It's day still, right? Yeah, I'm entering the evening right now, having dinner and enjoying my, actually, my, my last free day today, uh, I have to go on tour tomorrow morning for another 10 days. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. And uh, see you hopefully maybe next year somewhere in South America. I would really love to come there. We really hope so. See you, Metal Talk fans. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you.